Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your favorite esthetician again. If you're new here, welcome to Question and Answer with Amaka, your favorite esthetician. So, this is very impromptu. I'm expecting some guests and I'm ready for them and they're not here yet. I just thought to myself that, ah, this is my YouTube people. It's been long. I spoke to them on skincare related matters. And I just thought that this is a fantastic time to, you know, sit down and answer some skincare questions. But please, though, it may be all over the place because right now I don't even have the questions I'm supposed to answer to. I didn't see out any questions. I'm actually going to go on Instagram now and just scroll through the comment section and pick out just random things that I am being asked. I won't go on TikTok as well because I just have to answer some questions. A lot of hyperpigmentation questions. Please, I have a video on hyperpigmentation, everything you need to know, the ingredients, you know, products. All of that i'll link all of them in this video please go and watch them it feels like i constantly have to repeat myself with hyperpigmentation and i understand why most people that watch me are black and the one of the most nagging and disturbing skin concern that we face is hyperpigmentation um what cancer would you recommend for oily skin the thing about recommending product is there's no umbrella recommendation. It all depends on the products in your skin routine. So if you currently have products that have actives in your skin in your skincare routine, I want to know what actives to know what to recommend as a cleanser. But I'm giving you a general advice. If you have products in your skincare routine that address oil control and exfoliation, then opt for a plain cleanser that has enough surfactant but they must be gentle but they have surfactants that you know have a lot of cleansing abilities to break down that oil and looking at your CeraVe foaming cleanser and looking at even simple refreshing cleanser is a very affordable option just look for plain cleansers that are non-stripping but have the ability to break down that excess sebum then if you don't have axes in your routine then uh, consider incorporating cleansers that have salicylic acid they are amazing for people with oily skin and if you have acne prone skin and you don't have benzoyl peroxide in your routine then you can incorporate you know cleansers containing benzoyl peroxide so it all depends on um the products currently in your skincare routine okay one says that she added snail mucin essence cosarex um snail mucin cream Beauty of Jensen Glow Serum, um, Good Molecules Discoloration Serum and Toner, and she's experiencing purging. Now, the thing about purging is that when you apply, when you use new products in your routine, now your skin can, you know, react in a way that is unpleasant. Now, sometimes that can be your skin purging, essentially getting worse before it gets better. And sometimes it's a reaction your skin doesn't like what you're putting on it now when there's a reaction it depends on whether there's an allergic reaction or your skin is just being irritated if your skin is just being irritated it means there's a dose problem you are doing too much and you need to calm calm down sis calm down if it's an allergic reaction it means no amount of calming down will help your skin is reacting to allergic to an ingredient in one of the products that you introduced so that's that's one now let's talk about purging a lot of times your skin purges when you incorporate ingredients that to a very large extent either exfoliate or can speed up your skin cell turnover so when you incorporate exfoliating acids in your routine or retinoids most other things most other reaction that you get to other ingredients is either sensitivity or allergic reaction most of the time now the ingredients that you the products that you introduce in your routine so your good molecules brightening toner beauty of jason serum which is very hydrating and soothing snail mucin those are all, most of these are hydrating products they there's a less likelihood for you to experience purging with them so you may be experiencing sensitivity maybe because you stay using several things almost six things at the same time or you may be allergic to one of those products we don't know so what our advice is to do is stop everything you are doing now 
it feels like you incorporated a lot at the same time um let your skin get back to status quo how it was before you started all these products then start incorporating them one after the other do you understand to understand whether you are sensitive to any of them or you are allergic to any of them do you get so to cut the long story short cut out everything then start adding them one after the other and see how your skin reacts possibly it's just because you started everything at the same time now what's the best body cream to brighten your skin is best is very subjective what's you what's the best for you may not be best for me but fantastic options that you can opt for i won't say brightening body moisturizers i'll say moisturizers that aim to target hyperpigmentation so essentially if you wear a certain skin tone and you observe that you are shades darker these moisturizers could help bring you back to the complexion that you are supposed to be maybe even if you are a particular complexion possibly because they have a lot of melanin inhibitors can make you appear slightly brighter but don't expect any bleaching effect it, it, it just would not happen so you can look for urban rx body treatment they have repackaged it's now white up a picture um you can also be in nigeria you can also look for skin activity body treatment is a nigerian brand but i don't think they formulate in nigeria and they have fantastic a moisturizer that is a combination of amazing amazing hyper pigmentation focused ingredients my only drawback to that is it's fragrance free it's fragrance free but it smells like drug and i'm all for fragrance free i love fragrance free products even though i'm not totally against fragrance um what was i saying <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah even though i love fragrance products i am not interested in using a moisturizer that smells like drug like like coate malaria drug i'm very very strong it sticks on your clothes everywhere now i'm privileged because i don't have an intense body pigmentation concern that i'm trying to address i am aware that if i did whether or not it smells like shit, I will rub it. But because I do not, I am not under any obligation to use it. So if you have severe, I won't say severe, because I don't know if it addresses severe skin concern, but if you have body habit pigmentation issues, you can try the Skintivity brand as well. Just shut, close your nose, because it smells like malaria medication. One said, I use Neutrogena Fight and Fade Toner, Acne Wash, Neutrogena Pink Group Fruit Moisturizer, and it darkens her face what is she doing wrong so <sighs> there's something called post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation this is hyperpigmentation that arises as a result of inflammation now when you sensitize your skin your skin gets inflamed when you over exfoliate you sensitize your skin that inflames your skin and that leads to that heals with post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation hyperpigmentation that arises post information after an information now you are using a toner that has two percent salicylic acid you are using a wash that has two percent salicylic acid you are using a moisturizer with salicylic acid you are over exfoliating first then there's no sunscreen in your routine so you're not protecting your skin from the sun and then you are over sensitizing your skin so you are seeing hyperpigmentation from two angles not protecting your skin and then sensitizing your skin you first of all need to eradicate everything that you use replace it with a hydrating or a plain moisturizer a plain cleanser and stick to exfoliating like once or twice a week then incorporate a sunscreen also get a serum that targets hyperpigmentation and hopefully hopefully it starts correcting itself hey guys so i had to change my battery let me see yeah where did we stop let me zoom in a bit okay where did we stop um yeah <sighs> can you recommend a good sunscreen for oily and combination skin it depends on what kind of sunscreen you like do you like your sunscreen physical chemical if you like physical sunscreens i don't have any recommendation for you honestly speaking i i rarely use physical sunscreens i don't like how they feel they always leave a white cast no matter what and I, and honestly speaking i can't commit to that so but um chemical sunscreens misha misha like i don't know i don't know the new formulation because i know there's a new i know there's a new formulation i don't know how that feels i haven't tried it but the old formulation 
fantastic the skin aqua the skin aqua sunscreens amazing 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 even i'll put the pictures on the screen even had a label sunscreen is fantastic that's what i use currently had a, had a label uv white i love 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 it so yeah so you can try misha skin aqua i prefer asian sunscreens honestly speaking i prefer the texture because i love my sunscreens non-greasy whatsoever whatsoever even nivea the japan version of it fantastic fantastic sunscreen as well please which moisturizer can i use for dry skin okay the la roche posay lippy k balm is amazing i keep recommending this moisturizer because it is fantastic i'm here to recommend it for anybody that doesn't like it but in case you don't have access to it it can be expensive it can be if you're in nigeria sometimes it can just be hard to find um just go for moisturizers that are thick do you get you can use eucerin original healing cream really thick because if you have dry skin you are deficient in lipids so oils and your skin doesn't have the ability to retain moisture as well so you're looking for creams that are thick in lipids and occlusives so your thick creams also you also you could um, avoid really hot baths because hot baths can also break down those lipids also your cleanser should be very very gentle very importantly very very gentle as in non soap cleansers um some of them include can i remember anyone now toppy cream da cleansing wash a fantastic option la roche will say le pique wash as well cleanser i'll leave a picture of that as well just very really really gentle cleansers are your best friends so cleansers thick gentle cleansers thick creams then you can top up your cream layer your moisturizers with air, with an ointment or vaseline so after you know washing your skin washing your body apply a thick cream on a slightly damp skin to help you retain more moisture then follow it up with an ointment you can use cerebral healing ointment you can use vaseline just top it up with something that would occlude and prevent water from leaving your skin now benzoyl peroxide cleansers and how often can you use them for mild acne now it depends on different things um how mild is your acne do you have active acne if you have active acne then you can use it for you can use it once a day or morning and night if your acne is not active but you have acne prone skin you can use it every other day maybe every two days use today skip it use tomorrow skip it it all depends on how sensitive your skin is and how gentle the formulation is now can i replace urban rx with topical faded now topical faded is a product that targets hyperpigmentation it has a blend of um hyperpigmentation fighting ingredient which is the ideal honestly speaking if you are fighting hyperpigmentation our advice rather than getting individual products so transemic acid kojic acid alphabetin get a product that has a blend of them they work better together it's okay if you have that product then have one or two products that have other ingredients that that's fine but having different product containing all the ingredients one after the other is not a smart approach to take both financially and you know from the application angle it just dilutes your product when you apply too many things at the same time so that's about the, my topical faded now whether or not you can replace urban rx with my topical faded will be dependent on what urban rx products you are referring to urban rx is a brand that has different products so if you are referring to any of their um product or serums that target hyperpigmentation then you may be able to swap them kp on my body what body cream should i use so i have a video on kp keratosis pilaris i'll put a link above essentially what that means is that what what causes that is when um dead skin cells clog up your hair follicles so essentially it's a dry skin condition or more prominent in you know drier climates so what you need to do is keep your skin moisturized and exfoliate and break down those clogged dead skin cells so you're looking for moisturizers that offer deep moisturization and contain exfoliants your ahas salicylic acid that will break down those dead skin cells, especially your ahas because they act as humectant in addition to exfoliating um so i'm latin is an amazing fantastic option that is what i currently use and i am very generous to my application i pack it 
on also when you are moisturizing don't forget to moisturize on damp skin so let me go to tiktok and see if i see questions there i made a video um explaining that cleansers are meant to be washed off and someone said that a tiktok dermatologist recommended that they don't wash off cleansers in the morning except at night I'm very sure, I am very sure this is not what a dermatologist said. See, a lot of you don't calm down and listen. How will a dermatologist tell you to apply cleanser? So apply CeraVe foaming cleanser on your skin and don't wash it in the mornings, but wash it off at night. I am 100% sure this was, this was not what that dermatologist said. It's not possible. Absolutely ridiculous. Impossible. Impossible. But um, yeah, you, can't, you shouldn't leave cleansers on your face. It doesn't even feel nice. That's one. Then two, they contain surfactants, and these surfactants interfere with your skin barrier, except when they are used as emulsifiers. But that's just me being trying to be geeky. But surfactants in cleansers are meant to be rinsed off. They break down oil, and I did a video on pH of the skin, and I explained why cleansers are possibly one of the most disruptive part of the skincare routine and it's because of this surfactants they have the ability to break down oil and sometimes they leave the oil they're supposed to break down and start breaking down the lipids in your skin so imagine you and that is even when you just leave them on your skin for like one minute and rinse them off imagine you're not leaving them on their skin overnight please please don't please don't leave cleansers on your skin please someone's asking me but whether or not I'm going to be doing my usual sit down videos, I honestly do not know. For some reason, I just got bored of the regular skincare content. I rather just answer questions. Like really, actually, you can actually get bored about something that you're passionate about. And honestly, I'm bored. I'm bored of just talking about skincare, except I'm answering a question. Honestly speaking, like it is what it is. I don't know if. It's because my team is really expanding we are getting bigger and bigger and you know i'm being i'm being pulled from different directions and so i don't have time for it i don't know what it is but there's just something that that has just gone off honestly and i can't just keep my knowledge to myself i would i would i'm still here to answer your questions but i don't think i'll just be sitting down and you know making videos also someone asked me um, how she can um book me yeah right now i don't do any form of consultation any form of consultation um i'm thinking of adding that service but very limited slots maybe like once maybe two, two to three times a week because i don't have time honestly speaking to devote to that you know for a fee you can now book me not now i would announce when i'm open for that yeah, so maybe sometime next month I will start that service. Yeah, another another person responded to a video I made on natural product versus you know artificial products, and I basically I was you know it's a TikTok video, and I was trying to say that <laughs> what the hell is natural product? And she goes, "What's wrong with natural products? You 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 mad people are not trying to get cancer." <laughs> Where do I even start? Why do you think natural products are more are safer than synthetic products? Why do you think that the fact that something is natural means it is safe for your skin? Why do you think that the, the source of something determines its safety or efficacy? Why do you think that? Pause and ask yourself. A lot of times it's just the, the idea of it. The idea of rubbing a banana on your skin just feels healthy and natural. Forgetting that bananas are made up of thousand and one chemicals. Why do you feel that? Anyway, I don't want this to turn into a mini rant. Um, my guests are downstairs. I have to go. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll catch you in my next video. Bye, guys.